Hey, Brookside, Pastor Eric back again with another Bible break. And as we've said in the past, the idea of these daily devotions, these weekly devotions is to bring you some encouragement, some inspiration, some hope in the midst of a crisis that we know is just kind of sapping that from all of us. And right now in a time where um, uh, we're hearing news that are just more depressing and discouraging, uh, I think it's a great opportunity to kind of focus our hearts and our minds on the Word of God. And every time you do that, it's going to bring you the encouragement and the hope that you really need in the time that you need it. And I think I have something today that I know encouraged me when I stumbled across it, and I want to share it with you. And let me, it, it comes to us from the very end of the book of Acts. In fact, it's the very last verse in the book of Acts. It's chapter 28, verse 30 and 31, actually. But before I take you to that verse, let me just take a moment. Let me pray for you. And then I'm going to give you the context before we actually get to the passage. Okay. So wherever you're at right now, if you just take a moment uh, and bow your heads with me and let's just, unless you're driving. Okay. Maybe you don't even bow your heads at all. Don't even close your eyes if you don't want to. Let's just pray together. Okay. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the morning. Uh, thank you for the day you've given us. And uh, we pray that you will bless this time. And as we open up your word, I pray that it will bring us the encouragement, bring us the inspiration, bring us the hope that we really need right now. And I pray as we talk about this passage, as short as it may be, it will have the impact on all of our lives uh, that it has done for, for many millions of people who have stumbled across this passage. I pray, Father, that you will bless us today. We do pray you continue to be with the, the medical profession as they are on the front lines fighting this virus. Please protect them. Please provide for all of their, their needs, the gear that they need for protection, the equipment they need to heal people. I pray that uh, you'll take care of all of that. Thank you for a community that is rallying together to support people and find hope and take care of each other. And thank you for Brookside. Thank you for this body of believers that love each other. Thank you for this group of people who have heard uh, your call to serve the world around us and have taken that opportunity. And I pray, Father, that we will see a rich harvest of souls uh, on the other side of this, that your church will shine in a huge way. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So if you haven't done so yet, now's a great time to grab your Bible or even navigate on your smartphone or device to the very last chapter of Acts. It's Acts chapter 28 and find verse 30 and 31. But let me tell you what's going on a little bit. Starting in chapter 13 of Acts, the story shifts from the, the disciple named Peter, and it's focused all on the ministry of this guy named Paul. What Paul will do from chapter 13 all the way to the end of the book of Acts is he will go on three different missionary journeys all over the Mediterranean world. He will do this uh, to spread the message of Jesus to as many people as possible. And in the process, he will plant churches in just about every major metropolis city in the entire Mediterranean world. In fact, in the back of your Bible, there's most likely a map that shows you the journeys that he has taken. And it's a fascinating discovery. Everywhere he goes, he runs up against opposition. Everywhere he goes, he has people resisting the message that he is bringing. He not only runs up against some religious resistance from primarily the Jews, but he also runs up against some legal resistance primarily from the Roman authority. But what I love so much about Paul is that he has found a way to continue moving the mission forward. He's found a way to continue giving people the gospel of Jesus and in return, see people respond to the gospel all without breaking any religious Jewish law and without breaking any Roman law. Now, there are people definitely in the story who would accuse him of doing such things. But if you actually analyze what he does, Paul continues to move his mission, move the gospel forward without breaking any law or hurting really any kind of community of people. And that's a fascinating feat. That's a fascinating accomplishment. Regardless, it still lands him in a whole lot of trouble with a lot of people in authority. And so on a number of cases, he was accused, he was put on trial, he was beaten, um, all because of false claims, all because of people who were jealous, all because of people who simply did not like the message that he was bringing, all because of people who simply did not like the Savior that, G that, that Paul was, uh, was promoting, and that is, of course, Jesus Christ. At the very end of his third missionary journey, that's when he gets into some real trouble. At the end of his journey, he travels to the city of Jerusalem, and there he gets arrested by the Jewish authority, the Jewish religious authority. And that's when they want to bring him on trial with the Roman authority. And so um, from Jerusalem, he, and his, he along with a group of Roman soldiers, 
uh, sail to Rome. And when they get there, that's when uh, he is put on trial. But what's interesting is during his trial period, uh, he is given some freedom and he is given a home where he has to stay. It's actually house arrest. And the very last verse, the, sorry, chapter 28, verse 30 is very interesting. It says this, for two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. So let me just say it this way. Paul had a shelter in place directive, just like we do right now a shelter-in-place directive where he was not allowed to leave or do very much. However, he could still see people on a very limited basis. And to that end, he very much finds himself in a situation just like us. But the difference between Paul and us varies at that point. Because for so many of us in the shelter-in-place directive, we feel like we're just in a holding pattern. There's so much of what we want to do is put on hold uh, we have to wait for things to ease up in order to pursue those things again. And, and especially as the church, we kind of feel like our mission and our vision has been put on hold as well. And if you feel like you living out your Christian faith has been limited because of this shelter in place directive, I want to read to you the next verse, verse 31, and challenge that if I could. This is what it says. Boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love that verse because even though Paul's environment changed, even though his freedoms changed, even though his travel changed, even though his ability to go wherever he wants to, when he wants to go and talk to whoever he wants to talk to, all of that changed. He was in a sense captive to the home he was renting. But it didn't stop him from continuing to give the gospel. It didn't stop him from continuing to meet with people and talk to them about Jesus Christ. And the kingdom grew. And so I would just love to encourage you with something of a challenge. Even though your environment, your scenario, and the dynamics of your everyday life have shifted significantly, how can we look past those and see the opportunities, changed as they might be, to continue doing what God has called us to do? You know what? Maybe the only people you can really talk about Jesus with right now is your family. You taking the opportunity to read the Bible stories to your kids? You taking time to have them ask you questions about Jesus, about God, about heaven, about hell, about faith? What about your neighbors? Maybe you stay six feet away, but yet you still see each other in your driveway and you still ask how they're doing. You ask how their church is going. You ask uh, how they're struggling through this crisis. And if they have any kind of interest at this point in Jesus. And I don't know what that looks like for you. And, and I'm starting to figure out what that looks like for me. But here's what I do know. Just because your circumstances change, it does not mean your mission is put on hold. It just means that we have to get creative, show some ingenuity, take initiative on how we continue to do what God has called us to do. Man, I hope that encouraged you because I know when I read that, it was an encouragement to me and a challenge to me. Hope that inspired you. Hope you gave that gave you some hope and some encouragement. And that is a little bit of a Bible break for today. We cannot wait to see you again. And until then, stay tuned with us online, on Facebook, on YouTube, especially this Sunday when we meet with you in real time on brookside.org. We cannot wait to do church with you online this weekend. See you at nine o'clock this Sunday and the rest of the week online. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.